This is ABC 7 News at 11, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening, I'm Haley Wilkes. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our top story this evening, the Sarasota County Planning Commission just wrapped up a more than six hour meeting. It focused on a proposal to build a new recycling facility near the celery fields. Commissioners just denied that proposed project. ABC 7's Rick Adams has more from the Sarasota County Administration Building. While this proposed recycling plant is certainly stirring up a lot of controversy, the protesters were out here, as was a standing room only crowd at the Planning Commission meeting. More than 100 protesters were having their voices heard loud and clear prior to a meeting where Sarasota County's planning commissioners have a big decision on their hands. That decision is to whether or not recommend approval of TST Ventures' proposed 16-acre construction and debris recycling center at the corner of Palmer Boulevard and Apex Road. It would be located on land next to the celery fields, wildlife and recreation area. Zoning's fundamental role is to protect the health of the community, and I think this is a complete failure by our county uh, representatives. Uh, they are not protecting us. David Johnson is the founder of CeleryFields.org. He tells us he was very impressed with the number of people who came out for this peaceful protest, as well as the large standing room only crowd who stuck around for the planning commission meeting. It's a fantastic area, recreation. It's just a beautiful park. There's birding. Um, and we are very concerned that if you put co concrete crushers on the land next door, that we're going to have a, a serious uh, negative impact from that. This proposed recycling plant is the second major project on the county owned land. Earlier this year, the company proposing to build a restaurant depot withdrew their application. TST Ventures currently owns four acres on the site, and what commissioners are discussing is the possible rezoning of the land which would pave the way for the proposed recycling plant facility. The biggest concerns opponents of this project have are the potential environmental and traffic issues they say a facility like this would bring with it. Dust, silicon, traveling through the air. This is an unenclosed waste processing facility and noise, which will be driven by giant diesel machines. No one from Sarasota County or the developer were available for a comment. Approval of this from the Planning Commission means that it would then go to the Sarasota County Commissioners for final approval. Reporting from downtown Sarasota, I'm Rick Adams, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Rick. And again, the Planning Commission is rejecting that proposal. A developing story out of Venice where people are being asked to avoid the South Jenny. The investigation is underway at the jetty after a man's body was found in Humphreys Park. Police are on the scene. They're expected to be there for several hours. They say they don't believe anyone else is involved in this death, but they are asking that the area remain clear during their investigation. And an update tonight on an accident in Charlotte County that caused I-75 to be shut down for hours today. Troopers say Joseph Tertillion was driving a pickup truck north on I-75 with 15 other people on board when another truck moved into his lane ahead of him. Tertillion swerved to avoid an accident and overcorrected, going across the northbound lanes twice before ending up in the center median where the truck overturned. Ten passengers sitting in the truck bed were ejected. All 16 people were taken to the hospital. Nine have been released. The remaining seven were seriously injured. People in Manatee County are being warned about a court related email scam. The Manatee County Clerk of Court System says that the scam artists are sending out bogus emails that appear that they are from the state's e portal system. The email asks you to open an attachment to view a summons to court, but the attachment can link to a downloaded virus or attempt to steal your personal information. If you have been summoned for jury duty or to appear in court, you will receive an official notice in the mail from the Manatee County Clerk of Courts. A highly contagious dog flu has hit Florida for the first time, infecting at least a dozen dogs statewide. The virus strain has made its way to Florida at a recent dog show. Symptoms seen in dogs include runny nose, fever, and cough. Dogs are at most risk of contracting this virus by interacting with other dogs. To help prevent this, you can disinfect your dog's face and mouth after contact with other dogs. There is also a vaccination available, especially for dogs that are around a lot of other dogs, like maybe in doggy daycare, maybe they're at the dog park all the time. The virus is not usually fatal and it's not known to be transferable to humans. No cases have been reported in Sarasota or Manatee counties at this time.
Today marks the beginning of the Atlantic hurricane season and Sun Coast officials want to make sure that you are prepared. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is predicting an above average year for hurricane activity. Today, the Sarasota County Emergency Management Department spoke about the current disaster plan. They say three things you need this season, a plan, a disaster kit and information, including knowing the newly issued hurricane evacuation zones. Part of that preparedness is creating a disaster kit that has enough food and supplies to last three days without electricity or running water. After more than two decades at McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, the Hurricane Hunter planes known as Kermit and Miss Piggy are now moving to Lakeland. NOAA selected Lakeland Linder Regional Airport as the home for its aircraft operations center for the next decade. The two planes, a Gulfstream 4 jet and about 100 employees are relocating. Those aircraft provide crucial information about storms. Bob has gone up in those aircraft and Bob, it's, it's quite an experience, I'm sure, to go up in that to see the storm from above. Yeah, that P3 Orion right there, Miss Piggy, is the one I flew into, and I flew into Hurricane Ivan, which was a Category 4 hurricane at the time, moving through the Gulf of Mexico. We took out of uh, MacDill Air Force Base right there, so they're moving the planes out of harm's way if a hurricane is around, obviously, into Polk County there. But uh, tonight, different story. We had some showers around. We had some big storms inland that created the surface boundary, a little miniature cold front, if you will, and that collided with a little bit of a west wind. Showers and storms kind of blew up here. Notice the movement. These here earlier were moving off to the east. These moving to the west and these moving to the northeast. So all different directions there. All these little surface boundaries meeting and creating showers. It's some moderate rainfall now in Anna Marie Island. We had some pretty heavy rain near Gulf Gate. Uh, and uh, now most of the showers are winding down, but some fairly impressive amounts of rainfall, especially inland. Look at that three and a half inches of rain right there northeast of Arcadia. Lesser amounts, but still some pretty good rain estimated up to uh, just over a half inch there near the Gulf Gate area. Well, much more in a forecast. Talk a little bit about the tropics. That's right, a uh, system in the Pacific could have an influence on our weather down the road. Details and all that coming up in a few minutes. Haley? Thank you, Bob. New developments tonight in the attack at a resort in the Philippines that left dozens injured. The lone gunman is now dead. Mary Maloney has the latest. Hundreds of people at a resort near Manila run for their lives after gunshots and explosions. You know, they could hear some kind of an explosion and they could hear gunfire. But they can't see anything because the whole place was uh, uh, filled with smoke. Dozens trampled by the crowd, taken to local hospitals for treatment. They had to jump off the building from, from the back. So some of them had uh, broken, uh, and, uh, a broken leg and dislocated uh, shoulder. Many in the stampede feared they were running from a terrorist attack. As the situation unfolded, President Donald Trump weighed in. It is really very sad as to what's going on throughout the world with terror. But police say the gunman's target wasn't the people, it was the casino. And instead of terror, investigators say the motive was money. Police say a masked man created chaos by setting several gambling tables on fire, shooting gambling machines, and breaking video screens. Investigators say the man ransacked a room and stole gaming chips worth more than a million pesos each, which comes out to about $20,000. The resort put on lockdown as heavily armed SWAT officers wearing bulletproof vests and body armor swarmed the scene. Investigators say after the building was evacuated, police went inside and found the suspected robber, who police say committed suicide. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. An update tonight on a deadly plant explosion in Wisconsin. The sheriff there says a second person has been killed in that explosion as crews continue to search for debris and a third missing person. 16 employees were inside the plant in the village of Cambria when the blast happened late last night. Two were able to escape uninjured, but they say their thoughts are with their co-workers. Well, we're a small town, so it's scary. We're all close. We hope everyone's fine. So it's not much I can think about right now. The cause of the explosion is still not known. The Red Cross has been brought in to help families of the victims. Strong reactions pouring in tonight over President Trump's decision to withdraw the United States from the Paris Climate Agreement. The move aims to undo a signature achievement of President Obama's efforts to fight climate change 
while also keeping one of Trump's campaign promises. More than 190 countries have signed on, committing to cut greenhouse gas emissions in an effort to combat climate change. Only Syria and Nicaragua have not signed the deal. Trump argues the agreement is bad for the American economy, but he says he is open to finding a way to make the accord more appealing. Begin negotiations to re-enter either the Paris Accord or in really entirely new transaction on terms that are fair to the United States. The leaders of France, Germany, and Italy released a joint statement saying the Paris Climate Accord cannot be renegotiated. 61 U.S. mayors are pledging to adopt, honor, and uphold the accord's commitments. Two CEO advisors are walking away from President Trump as a result of his withdrawal from the climate agreement. Disney CEO Bob Iger now says he will step down from President Trump's Business Advisory Council. It comes just hours after Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced that he would quit that same panel. Musk said, quote, climate change is real. Leaving Paris is not good for America or for the world. Straight ahead, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with more on the official Suncoast forecast. Plus, as we head into summer, what you need to know about fertilizer restrictions and why they've been put in place. Plus, later in sports, a rematch of last year's NBA Finals. Highlights from Game 1, Warriors versus Cavs. If you want 24-7 access to ABC 7's breaking news stories, weather forecasts, traffic alerts, health reports, Suncoast View, and more ABC 7 programming, now there's good news. Introducing the free ABC 7 channel on Amazon Fire TV. Your 24-7 access to ABC 7. Just search ABC 7 on the streaming device and download the free ABC 7 channel app. Or if you don't have an Amazon Fire TV, you can get one at Amazon.com. Hi, I'm Joan London with A Place for Mom. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families find senior care, and today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And nobody understands your options like the advisors at A Place for Mom. These are local expert advisors that will partner with you to find the perfect place and determine the right level of care, whether that's just a helping hand or full-time memory care. Best of all, it's a free service. Call today, a place for mom. You know your family, we know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Call A Place for Mom right now to get our free ebook on financing senior care, as well as a free referral for senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-290-0352. That's 1-800-290-0352. We asked you, Suncoast, why do you like ABC7? I like ABC7 because it's local. It gives me all the local news. The local news, local weather. It's so local and so community driven. Kelly Wilgus does a great job. John Scalzi, that's my guy. Bob Harrigan is wonderful. Stephanie's my favorite. I like Scott Dennis. I like them all. We're all very grateful that you cover what you do and you're here to participate with the community. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Above the influence. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. A lot of people calling in. Mm -hmm. Some people couldn't even get through because the lines were busy. Right, and I, I, I'm telling people that now that if you still have a question, you can always uh, email us or also go to our social media right. and just ask a question there. 
and we'll be more than happy to get back to you. And, and of course, uh, we yeah. still have our mysuncoast.com too, the hurricane guide there. Mm -hmm. You can download that and actually just go through it as a PDF file and read all the things you can uh, get Great ready idea. for this hurricane season. I want to thank all the folks that mm -hmm. came down too from the EOCs from Sarasota, Manatee, and Charlotte counties, the Red Cross, American Red Cross, and representatives from Florida Power and Light, and all the meteorologists and all job. the staff. You did yep. a good job. Uh, we have a tropical system we're watching right now, Haley, already into the season. And kind of interesting, a Pacific storm named Beatrice uh, may eventually bring us some beneficial rains down the way. Right now, the winds are uh, weakened to 40 miles an hour. It's still a tropical storm. Uh, it is heading off to the northeast and north-northeast at 6. It's going to go through a little area right here into uh, Mexico. And, Central America and then emerge in the southwest Gulf of Mexico where it has a small outside chance of turning into a tropical depression or possibly tropical storm. More than likely it's going to be just a lot of tropical moisture headed our way uh, come Wednesday and Thursday of next week, although the Canadian model and European model do indicate that we may see an, an area of low pressure uh, in the Gulf of Mexico by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. That would be a good thing. We could use a lot of rainfall. I don't think it's going to be a big windstorm at all, but it will bring uh, some showers and thunderstorms. Now, this is a little piece of energy in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, we've had some uh, surface boundaries and afternoon and evening thunderstorms across the area. Those are starting to wind down. There's still some lightning off in the Gulf and some light rain occurring near Anna Maria Island. But for the most part, we will see cloudiness tomorrow with a chance for some showers along the coast late morning, early afternoon. And then the main focus should be in the inland areas late in the afternoon and evening. You see all this steady tropical moisture heading in our direction. And there's another disturbance here over New Mexico and Texas, which will also kind of add and aid these storms and showers right through the weekend and into early next week. So pretty good chances for some beneficial rains around town. Sarasota right now, 75 degrees and uh, generally partly cloudy skies. There dew point is at 72, humidity 90%. Winds are out of the east at 6 and the pressure 30.03 inches. That, by the way, is on the rise. And as the high goes today, one degree above average, the low as well, just one degree above the average of 71 degrees, 96 the record set in 1945. I just checked the rainfall gauge at the Sarasota Brady Airport. It's at 21 hundredths of an inch now. So we're getting some rainfall uh, currently to start the month of June. And you can see showers scattered about throughout the day tomorrow. High temperatures will be a little bit cooler than average because of the increased cloud cover uh, throughout the day on Friday. We'll see some peaks of the sunshine, but uh, showers and a few thunderstorms are possible at any time during the day. As I mentioned, most of the action should be winding down tonight and then tomorrow uh, 5 a.m. Maybe one or two shower, one or two lone showers around. Not much going on up until about noon and then we start to see an increase in activity into the Gulf and out here into the central portion of Florida and then it moves off toward the east. Notice things kind of quiet down after 8, 9 o'clock. Most of it pushing off to the east, but a lot of clouds around. Even on Saturday, quite a bit of cloudiness in the uh, offing, but not a lot of rainfall on Saturday morning and into the afternoon. We start to see more showers and storms developing late in the day into the peninsula. As far as rainfall totals, the bulk of the precipitation in the inland areas, as uh, once again, we have a little west to southwesterly wind flow out ahead of this uh, storm system. South to southwest winds, 5 to 10 knots. The seas will be 2 feet with a light chop out there. The water temperature, a steamy now, 87 degrees. UV index a little bit lower because of the cl clouds around. And then tides upcoming, a high tide will be at 908 and a low tide at 331. Scattered storms and partly cloudy skies uh, through the overnight hours, 73 for your low. And then tomorrow, look for scattered showers, 50% chance of that happening, 85 for your high. We'll have variable clouds. The extended forecast calling for a 60 to 50% chance over the weekend. It's not a washout, but there'll be a few around. And then we'll be watching the tropics next Wednesday and Thursday. Temperatures in the mid 80s there. Well, hurricane season got in the way of fishing this week, but we had a lot of people out there enjoying the fishing. This is Beach Fishing Adventures and Dale from Lakewood Ranch. They have a fishing club and he got a hold of a coach out there and coach Steve Herrick, Steve Herrick catching a big Again, Snook and another nice one there, Bill Musgrave, also from the Lakewood Ranch Fishing Club, uh, catching that one. And then uh, Steve and Ken, I guess that's a, a snapper of some sort. I think that was about a mile offshore right there, or uh, not a mile, 100 miles offshore. Show me the fish charters. And then Captain Larry McGuire, who is part of that, uh, took out Shelly and Susie, and they caught those lane snappers, big lane snappers right there that you see. So good catches all around. Well, uh, we uh, want to show you this here, what's going on. The New Pass Fishing Pier cleanup going on. And then we have the weekly winners of the 87th Annual Sarasota Tarpon Tournament. 
Uh, Tom Kane in the lead with 39.5 inch girth as far as the tarpon goes. And look at that, Stephanie and Dave Sugar. We know Dave. Uh, he is the doctor, you know, the orthopedic oh, surgeon. Yeah, Dr. Sugar. And his wife. And they have the overall his and her uh, first place competition right now. So they're doing pretty well. They are doing and well. And there's only, I think, about a week left before it officially ends. And how long does it take to get 100 miles offshore? How long uh, of a trip is that? It depends on your boat. I know yeah, some guys have big, big boats. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, I would say I, I went up 90 miles one, one time. It took a couple of hours. Yeah, that's yeah. quite a distance yeah, out is. there. Wow. Sure All right. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> if you've recently shopped at a Kmart, you may want to check your financial records. The retailer's parent company, Sears Holdings, says some Kmart stores were targeted by hackers. Kmart store payment systems were apparently infected with virus-like computer code and some credit card numbers were stolen. But the company says no personal information was compromised. The investigation is still ongoing, so details on which stores were targeted, that's not available yet. There are currently three Kmarts on the Sun Coast, two in Manatee County, one in Sarasota. As the rainy season begins in Florida, Manatee and Sarasota counties are looking to protect our local waterways. Fertilizer restrictions are now in effect until the end of September. Homeowners are being asked not to use nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers. The chemicals lead to an excess of nutrients in our local waterways that create algae blooms and other problems. The restriction is good. It reduces the amount of nitrogen going into the waterways in our heaviest rain period. So if you plan accordingly, you can uh, fertilize prior and then fertilize after, and it really doesn't affect the plant material that much. The restriction applies to all residential and commercial properties. Leaving grass clippings on your lawn will help provide 50% of the nitrogen your lawn needs. Keeping grass taller will also help to deepen the roots and withstand heat and dry spells. Sports is next, but first, here's Jimmy Kimmel. The following is a feast for your senses. Congratulations. Thank you very Two much. Two kids, four kids. Yeah. Two since us. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it really is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was addicted to heroin and crack. My choice was alcohol. I used anything that I could get my hands on. You know me. I'm the Addiction Network. Over one and a half million people have called for help. So why haven't you called? What are you waiting for? The Addiction Network is here to take your call 24 hours a day. I lost everything. And the only way to get my life back was to pick up the phone and call and go to treatment. Call 800-424-2819. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that, you know, you as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old can't really make a difference. It's not always about you. It's not just one person. It's, it's a group. It's a team. Just that simple act is transforming someone else's life. It's one of the best feelings in the world. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. I'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. More than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. Every week on Animal Outtakes, it's a new adventure.
From meeting curious lemurs to feeding big cats and hosing down rhinos, there's never a dull moment. And sometimes these amazing animals chime in. Tune in to Animal Outtakes to find out what they have to say. Watch Animal Outtakes every week on ABC7. ABC7's Prime Time is brought to you by Gattle Automotive. Now, sports. Deja vu in Oakland tonight as the Warriors face the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA Finals for the third straight year. Warriors looking to redeem themselves after losing the championship to the Cavs last year. The Warriors break the tie in the first quarter with a slam dunk by Kevin Durant to put Golden State up 6-4. to four. And then to the second, about five minutes left in the half, Kyrie Irving earns some style points. Look at this one. The ending, the ending's the best. Ugh, he is fouled while trying to hit that three, still has the ball and falls, shoots it anyway, scores, and then goes to the line. That brings the Cavs within seven. It's the Warriors that get through, though. They win 113 to 91, game one. The Miami Marlins are honoring one of their own. The team is creating a trust fund for the mother and daughter of pitcher Jose Fernandez. Marlins president David Sampson says the fund will be used to pay all education costs for Fernandez's daughter Penelope. Fernandez's mother will receive annual payments from that fund. Fernandez died in a boat crash in Miami last September along with two of his friends. In Cleveland, the Oakland Athletics got hosed today. Literally, the game had to be delayed after the sprinklers went off in the bottom of the sixth. Somehow, the sprinklers were activated in the outfield, leading to this two-minute delay, so not too bad. The day, though, didn't get much better for the athletics. They lost 8 nothing to the Indians. That's a look at sports. We'll have our lotto numbers right after this. For years, I've told everyone my Craftmatic adjustable bed was the greatest until I got the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has an adjustable pillow feature that's awesome. You're going to want one, too, when you see how little they cost. If you've ever had a bad night's sleep, call and price the new Craftmatic Legacy. It has so much more than other adjustables and still costs up to 50% less. Featuring a rising adjustable pillow rest, bedside power plugs, under bed night lights, and more. Available in all mattress types with optional heat and soothing massage. For as much as half the price of Tempur-Pedic Sleep Number and other adjustables, enjoy temporary relief of low back pain, nighttime heartburn, mild arthritis. Adjust the rising pillow feature to help align your head, neck, and shoulders. See for yourself with our 30-day in-home trial. So call Call and price one today for less, up to 50% less. You get so much more and it still costs less. You got to see how little they cost. Call 1-800-237-0214. That's 1-800-237-0214. Call 1-800-237-0214. Call now. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I believe that home is where your pet is. And that loving an animal means never giving up on them, never letting them go. I believe that when you spare and neuter your pets, you help decrease the number of homeless animals. Because every dog and cat deserves a place to call home. I believe that I found my best friend at a shelter. And you can too. We believe that together with Best Friends Animal Society, we can bring about a time when there are no more homeless pets. Visit ambassadors.bestfriends.org. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please 
help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Tomorrow is National Donut Day, and to celebrate, one company has found a unique way to deliver them to city officials in Denver. Lamar's Donuts and the Denver Salvation Army teamed up to send donuts all over the city by using drones. Donut Day was started as a fundraiser for the Salvation Army 79 years ago. Dunkin' Donuts tomorrow is offering a free classic donut for those who buy a beverage, while Krispy Kreme will offer one free donut of your choice no purchase necessary. Hmm. Guess I have to have a donut tomorrow. Got to like count it. for those calories. You know, donut. You think about it. It's got a lot of sugar. A lot. Eggs. Of you sugar. know the dough. It's, it's, it's really but bad. But once for you. once in a while, it's not bad. Once a year. I mean, if you really only eat them once a year on National Donut Day, then you're right. fine. Yeah, you can have one tomorrow. We'll see you then. Have a great night.